Hi everyone, it's Yetunde here and today I have the pleasure of introducing you to Dist Tube Culture, an incredible sounding distortion processor based on a Studio Modern Classic. This Tube Culture's hardware predecessor was released in 1998 and it quickly became a go-to processor for adding harmonically rich valve distortion to any sound. This type of audio processing is quite unique with an elusive sound that's highly sought after. The simplicity of its structure coupled with extra versatile sound capabilities made it stand out from the crowd with carefully recreated circuitry and authentic valve character. This tube culture is designed to be used on all types of sounds, breathing life back into samples and recordings that lack grit and sonic character. Before we move on to the presentation, let's listen to how it sounds on a few different sound sources. The main view is simple and easy to use. In the top left corner, the menu allows you to save, import and export presets as well as resize the plugin window. On top of that, there's the quality section as well as A and B functions and the advanced panel, which we will cover later on. The top row functions are as follows. Drive control, bias mode, presence and air switch, function switch, analog VU meter, output amount, and finally, the dry and wet mix. Drive control defines how much distortion is applied to the original signal. Let's add it now and hear how it changes the tone of the instruments. First off, guitar. Then drums. Next up, we see the bias control. This one is really interesting as it defines how much current is going through the emulated tubes, subtly changing the color and tone of the effect. Let's now play with the sound and slowly add the bias control from zero to maximum. The function switch, on the other hand, offers four valve modes, each with differing sound qualities. It is set to triode mode by default, which sounds like this. It can also be set to three other pentode modes, P1, P2 and P3 all inspired by the hardware unit that this tube culture is based on. Now let's hear them all one by one. Pentode 1 
Pento two. And Pento three. The air slash present switch underneath the bias control allows the user to add a slight EQ boost for mid-high and high range, emphasizing the distortion in these frequencies. The presence adds more coloration to the mid-high spectrum, while air gives it a tiny bit of high-end boost. Now let's hear how it can sound. Next up, the output control. It allows you to control the overall volume of the effect, while dry and wet knob sets the balance between the dry and distorted signals, also allowing you to perform parallel processing when using the disc tube culture directly on a track. There are a few more interesting features present in the advanced panel view, which we'll cover now. First off, there's the stereo mode, which lets you define if the effect will be applied to the whole stereo image of the incoming signal or only its mid or sides. This comes in handy during mixing sessions if you want to be able to separately treat your center panned bass, kick or vocals or other elements which are panned to the sides such as pads or percussive sounds. Let's use this drum break now and hear how the stereo mode will affect its mid and sides only. Next up, there is the high pass and low pass filter that allows you to sculpt out the frequencies that you don't want to distort, as well as the dynamic section which offers gate and comp mode that lets you focus on the distortion based on threshold. As you might have noticed, when in the advanced panel, the analog visualizer turns into a digital one, letting you see the filtering changes as well as visualizing the bias mode activity. It also becomes the EQ visualizer when the output equalizer is enabled. This last handy module allows you to implement final sculpting into the already saturated and colored signal. The high pass and low pass modules set the cutoff frequency of the output while the tilt slope sets the level of the tilt EQ centered at 630 Hz. Let's now play it out on this drum set. We'll try different positions of each of the knobs to hear how it can shape the final sound. All right, that's it. I hope this video showed you how interesting, versatile and rich sounding this tube culture can really be. Hopefully it will inspire you to try it on your own projects and discover your own personal flavor of tube saturation. For more videos, make sure to leave a thumbs up and subscribe to Arturias channel. Thanks for watching and see you soon.